We saw that the Dirac Lagrangian gives in the classical limit the Dirac equation. But we also want the field psi to obey the Klein Gordon equation, and for that to happen in the classical limit, uh, we need a condition on gamma, which is such that the anticommutators of gamma um, is equal to 2 times uh, the metric. So if we take mu and nu equal to 0, we see that we have gamma naught squared uh, equals 1. And if we take mu equal nu uh, but not equal to 0, so equal to 1, 2 or 3, then we have gamma i squared equal to minus 1. And when mu is not equal to nu, then uh, g mu nu is 0. The first two conditions could be fulfilled if gamma were just numbers. However, this is not true for the th last condition. Indeed, we see that if we swap gamma mu and gamma nu, then uh, we acquire a minus sign. And this property cannot be fulfilled by numbers, but can be by matrices. In fact, we can show that to obey these three conditions, uh, the gamma matrices need to be at least 4 by 4 matrices. We can choose different representations of these matrices, and the one we are going to use is called the Dirac representation of the gamma matrices. With this representation, you can easily verify that gamma naught squared is equal to 1, gamma i squared is equal to minus 1, and when mu and nu are different, uh, the anticommutator is 0. We can simplify slightly the notation using Pauli matrices. And they are defined in the same way whether their index is up or low. And they are Hermitian and their square is 1. We see that gamma 1, gamma 2 and gamma 3 can be written as blocks of the Pauli matrices. Finally, we note that only gamma naught is Hermitian while gamma 1, gamma 2 and gamma 3 are not Hermitian, this is obvious from their explicit expression. In fact, the Hermitian conjugate of gamma mu can be expressed as gamma naught, gamma mu, gamma naught, which you can easily show by replacing mu by 0, 1, 2 or 3. This is a very handy expression which we will use repeatedly in our calculations. And same for gamma naught squared equal to 1.